18 minutes past the hour. Good morning to you. This is Insight on Business. My name is Michael Libby, and we're all about advertising, marketing, consumer trends, best business practices. Doesn't matter what size business that you have. We hope that you tune in on a regular basis live here at Webcast One Live or whenever you want to all over uh, the web. A beer. I know. I got your attention right out of the gun, right? I, I got to tell you, personal preference for me, I'm a Miller Lite guy. And I know most of you out there are going, boo, hiss. That's not even beer. I understand that. My bride tells me consistently that that is not beer. This is beer. And, and I just have never acquired a taste for those stouter flavors, if you will. And I don't even know the difference between a Pilsner and a, what's the other one? Pilsner and a, what is it? Stout ale. Log, lager? Is it, lager. Loggers and, lager. Loggers and ales are the two major families. I don't know. I just drink the stuff. I pop the can and go. And go. Anyhow, uh, this morning we've got two guys from the new Metro Brew uh, Pub. It's called 515 Brewing Company. And Bailey Forrest is with us, as is Dave Rupti. And we're going to be talking about some of the backstory issues and questions uh, that go on. Uh, Dave, I know you've got lots of partners in this whole world and, uh, tell, tell what, what's the good about having a lot of folks involved in a project like this and what's the downside? Sure. Yeah. The, the major, um, well, there's four of us first off, there's a uh, me, Bailey, and then Ryan Rost and, uh, um, Brandon Craig are the four of us. I, you know, um, the big thing that we got out of it, uh, was, uh, we have, Four people to share the workload across, and we self-financed everything as well. So I know um, having four people to share that financial burden across is is, is very helpful as well. Um, so that's that was kind of the, the major. But you've been doing this day for a long time, haven't you? Sure, all four of us have been home brewing for quite some time. Right, um, I've been probably brewing about eight years now, and and uh, Ryan eight or nine, and, and Bailey six or seven now, and Brandon six or seven as well. So yeah, we all started off as a hobby, and we all had that shared common interest um, in making craft beer at home um, and we wanted to bring that out to the, the people in the local area. Bailey, what what might folks want to know about having multiple partners? Now, the good side, and, and Dave correctly said, hey, we had, because we self-funded this thing, and congratulations, by the way, uh, we self-funded this thing, so it's always helpful to have lots of input mm -hmm. with that. But there must be some things that you got to kind of watch out for, too, because you're bringing divergent personalities into this group. You might all like craft beer. Who wins the argument? <laughs> <laughs> or are there any? It, it depends on the argument. I see. <laughs> I, it is wonderful to have all four of us yeah. there. I mean, we've all, like you said, we've got divergent personalities and lots of different interests. And that's really worked surprisingly well. Um, <laughs> so far. <laughs> so far, <laughs> knock on wood. Um, but you're right. I mean, we've got... Four very distinct personalities, and when I mean, it took us three months to come up with a name. I mean, we really? were we had spreadsheets and flyers and posters and whatnot, and so making those decisions sometimes is is a little bit difficult. But you know, it, that being said, we definitely take the time and hash out every single idea that we've got. <laughs> well, so, yeah, <laughs> and, and and you also had some help on the other side too. Your spouses have all been involved in this from wielding paintbrushes mm -hmm. to uh, some of the design work and things like that. So uh, so more people have got to be helpful as you went through all this. Why did you settle on Clive? Uh, we, we settled on Clive um, for, for a variety of reasons. It wasn't our first choice. I'll tell you, we, we looked around the Des Moines Metro, the, more the business core area, but uh, we found a building that was affordable and the, uh -huh. the, the, we had a great, the, the owners have been great to work with. Um, so we ran the bike trail, which was a big, a, a big, huge positive for us. And and quite frankly, there isn't a whole lot in terms of. I mean, there's there's the, the big two out in the west side. There's Granite City and Rock Bottom. There really isn't a whole lot of you know brewery work or, or uh, activity out in that part of town. So you know, most in the Des Moines core, which is great. There's there's three or four you know brew pubs down here, but there really wasn't any breweries between here and the, the west side of town. So it really. We think it'll work really well for us, and the, the trail is probably the major major selling point for us there in that location. Yeah, we were going to ask about the trails because you have a very active trail right behind the brewery. Does that mean that you're going to be able to, will you be able to have a patio out there that uh, you might be able to serve in? Well, we, we, cer <laughs> we certainly hope so. You know, we, working with the city of Clive um, will be key on that. Um, you want me to talk to the mayor for it? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, there's been you know, past some resistance, and rightfully so, from you know um, the city keeping people or keeping bars and restaurants off of the trail. You know, I'm a runner and Bailey's a biker and, you know, I, I don't like getting harassed by people as, as I'm running 
by locations. But it is great to have places there to stop and, and, and enjoy a libation with um, people of, of, of a like uh, persuasion when it comes to running and biking. Well, I happen to know a place that's also in Clive, not too very far from you guys, that has an outside uh, patio. And sure. And they've sure. been doing that for a long time, and I don't think to any downside. Sure. But, but they're not also open at night, not necessarily during the daytime. Absolutely. So that's uh, maybe a difference as well. Um, Bailey, t- tell me about what is the deal with this craft beer? What 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 is the deal? Um, it is, you know, I know the guys from Peace Tree Brewery, you know, and, and the list goes. I, I'm sorry if I'm going to start naming names, I'm going to forget some people. So I apologize for that right out of the gun. But there's lots of people doing this. Why? It's getting back to the grassroots of brewing. I mean, what was it? Uh, four or five months ago, we just finally reached the same number of craft brewing or local breweries that were in place pre-prohibition. Um, it really, yeah, a. But it's, I mean, it's growing at an astounding rate at this point. Um, and despite those numbers, we're still only 6% of the market share. Um, people are getting back to, they're, they're pulling back, pulling back towards their local communities. And breweries, historically, have been really a part of the local community. And particularly in the Des Moines area, that's something that we wanted to really get into. I mean, that's, that's we don't want to be this great regional or national brewing company. We want to be Des Moines. We want to be Iowa. So we think that's... Um, Perfect name, then, 515 Brewing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, we are limited to central Iowa with that. Though. Yes. <laughs> you are a, a bit limited. Well, I, I think one of the things, I, you know, I am um, not an Iowa native, but I came here almost at the dawn of civilization back in 1979. So I've seen the changes. I came here when there were still state-owned liquor stores. You couldn't buy stuff in a grocery store, for example, um, and that was right behind the time, I think, that you had to have liquor books when you would go into, I mean, these are great stories, you know, you used to have these liquor books that you would go into the liquor store and and they would fill out exactly what it is you're buying. So I've seen this expansion of this business, not only in, in uh, beer, but also in wine and now spirits with all kinds of people, and I think heading the, the, the list was our friends over in uh, Templeton, with mm-hmm. Templeton Rye, they Absolutely. really got a, a nice bounce of that. So you can buy stuff, all kinds of stuff already, but there must be a passion that goes into this with you guys that say, okay, I'm going to put a lot of money out there and a lot of time, and a lot of sweat equity to open up a business. And this has got to have an end run. I mean, what's what's down the way, Dave, for this? What, what do you hope to accomplish <laughs> other than um, lots of time with friends? That's the that's the big question that we haven't really answered ourselves yet. We don't know where it's going to go. Um, you know, really, we all share a passion for beer and for making beer and for having something unique and local. Sure. Um, I think that maybe separates us a little bit from some of the motivations of other. You know, not that they said are bad motivations or just different motivations. Um, you know, uh, between us and and folks like uh, Peace Tree or even our friends over at Confluence, which we we support those guys. Sure. They make an awesome product. Um, their scale is a little bit different than ours, and and their um, business plan is a little different than ours, and that's fine. Um, it, it turns out with beer, you don't need to make a ton of beer to make, as long as you stay small, to make to make a, a decent go of it. Um, and so, you know, we're going to kind of see where it goes. As long as we're making good beer and people are enjoying it, we'll, we'll try and meet that demand um, without overextending ourselves as well. We'll go over to uh, Bailey. We've just got a question on Twitter. And you can uh, tweet questions if you'd like uh, live. It's at InsightADV. That's at InsightADV. If you've got some brew pub questions for the guys uh, Bailey and Dave, uh, you might as well get them in now. Um, the, the question was, are, are you planning, would you, would you be open to having a Des Moines Cycle Club event <laughs> at 515? <laughs> I think I'm seeing a yes. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, when I, I, I've got a pretty long background of, of cycling. I've done RAGBRAI several times and raced with the DEMOS, the, essentially the, the race side right. of the Des Moines Cycle Club uh, for a couple of years and found that cyclists really enjoy their craft beer. And, you know, given the fact that we're right on the bike trail, we've got bike themed decorations throughout the place. We've got sure. a, a big old mustache made out of bike gears on the wall. And <laughs> so we definitely want to cater to that community. I mean, it's an awesome community to be a part of, just like the craft beer community in general. What were, Dave, what were the biggest challenges in doing this project? 
Um, well, the, obviously the biggest one is money. Yeah, um, well, sure. You know, there's kind of two routes you can go with making a, a brewery. One is the, the big route, which requires a lot of money. And the other one is the small route, which we took, which requires a lot of money. So um, <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the biggest challenge. And getting all four of us to agree on a lot of things, was, honestly, has been kind of kind of a challenge. The location was kind of a challenge to get us all settled down on that. You know, uh, kind of the business plan, how we were going to go about selling the beer was, was kind of a challenge. Um, but really, because we had that financial constraint, we had to do a lot of the work ourselves mm-hmm. and find creative solutions to problems that are easily solved with a lot of money, but not easily solved without a lot of money. And so, you know, to keep things uh, cost effective, we've had to make some compromises in our equipment and our in our processes. Um, but we still think we're making really good beer, and that's the most important part of our. There you go. Of- you got to have the beer. Fair we're going to talk a little bit about what kinds of beer they have and why they got into this. Also, show you a video that we did. Um, during one of their soft openings, we'll ask about why they did soft openings and all those other things when we come back. Dave Rupti in the studio along with Bailey Forrest. We're talking about the 515 Brewing Company, brand new here to the Des Moines Metro, located in Clive, just outside of the village of Windsor Heights, by the way. Absolutely. We we petitioned you guys to come to the village, but (laughs) we decided to to move to Clyde. Put our foot across that line. I know, every once in a while. (laughs) Drive carefully. Uh, The 515 (laughs) Brewing Guys, next up with Insight on Business. We're powered by Webcast One Live.